Hello. I think we're working. Is it working? Can you see me? I think we got it. Hello everyone. I think we finally figured it out. I'm not Heather, um, I'm Teresa, but we're gonna use her account to do this since my account got, um, it got blocked. <laughs> I think it saw that I was trying to go live uh, on a channel that I don't normally go live on and it just completely, um, locked me out of being able to go live even on my own channel. So, yay, it's working. Okay, good, I'm so glad Dee and I um, have spent a few minutes trying to figure out a solution. Uh, I didn't wanna postpone it, I don't think she did either. So we're here and we are going to do a lovely project for you guys today. Um, and I'm so grateful for D for allowing me to do this. Um, so just by way of introduction, I'm Teresa. Um, I'm the owner of Decoupage Queen. Hello, Aveta. Um, we're live on my daughter's account, Heather. Um, she let me log in with her credentials because mine got blocked from going live. Um, but we're here, we're figuring it out, and we are going to do this. So hopefully you guys will bear with us and um, have set aside some time to, to kind of watch. This is not a long project, um, but this is what we're going to be doing. So I will sh uh, show you guys. But before we get started, where are you all from? Uh, I know Dee has a lot of members in the UK. I'm just curious. Um, this is a new group for me to, to live stream on, so I'm just curious where everyone's from and um, maybe how you got started in doing decoupage or if you haven't done it before and you're here to just kind of learn something, let me know that too. So I would love to know a little bit more um, about you guys before we dive right in. Feel free to chat in the comments as we go. Any questions that you have about what I'm doing or um, about the paper that we're using, we are going to be using Decoupage Queen paper. Um, this is a, it's a new brand. Um, it is something that I've designed and uh, Dee was actually my very first retailer to sign up and um, really kind of helped me in terms of getting the pricing, um, you know, structure that we wanted to use and just, you know, really kind of encouraged me from the very beginning. So I'm very grateful to Dee for all her support. Um, so she does carry the paper. She's actually chose the paper that we're gonna be using for the projects today. So it's these two. She's actually getting ready to place another order. So if there is anything, um, you know, that she doesn't currently have that you want to get, I definitely recommend letting her know soon so that she can get it for you. All right. So I didn't hear anyone. I didn't see anybody tell me where they're from. Iveta, if you're still on, I know where you're from. Dee, I know where you're from. Um, hello, Janet. Hello, Lynn. Um, so I'm going to also go over to my little iPad over here and follow along with the comments because in a minute what I'll do is I'll take the camera and I'll put it overhead so you can actually see the project as it's going. 
Um, there we go. Okay, there we go. So now I can see, um, I can see the comments live as they're happening. Okay. All right. So we'll give it a few more minutes for some other people. I know we had some technical difficulties, so hopefully they didn't give up trying. Um, let's see. So um, I'm Teresa, again, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, um, in the United States. Um, and I won't say anything else about the United States. <laughs> There's a lot going on in the US right now. We're all fine. <laughs> um, I know I had some friends from the Netherlands messaging me asking if everything was okay, but yes, we're fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm in Georgia. Um, and I've got the house kind of to myself, the cats here. Um, my husband took the kids earlier, so I, hopefully we won't have any distractions uh, other than the cat. Um, all right, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip us over um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Again, what we're doing is this journal and we're gonna do this with stone paper and washi tape um, we're actually going to make our own pages. Hi, Nancy. Um, have a great day, Nancy. So we're gonna make our own pages. I actually used watercolor sheets, um, which is a nice, sturdy sheet to use uh, for the inside of a book. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know if you can't hear me. Um, I did turn off my sound so I wouldn't get any feedback, but hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip us over and we'll get started. Okay, so let's see. Hopefully you can still see my overhead um, screen. Okay, great. I'm glad, glad you can hear me. Can you see, there we go. So hopefully you can see my work table. Um, I'm gonna plug us in so I don't lose power. Okay, great. So, great, all right. So let's see how that looks. There's a little bit of a delay and I'm watching over here on my um, iPad to make sure that I capture all the comments. So I'm gonna just tilt this down just a little bit. There we go. All right, so hopefully you can see my work table okay. Um, let me know if you can't. And I'll show you what we're, what we're doing. We're gonna use these two sheets of paper. This is Antique Doors 1 and 2. And these are, um, these are my designs. These were one of the earliest ones that I did. Um, let's scooch this over so you can see it a little bit better. Um, these were, uh, actually this one was first and I just, this is my favorite color, this blue. And I just love the script and the rusty textures and just all this, movement going on and you can see there's actually a little bit of um, like a, a brick kind of masonry diagram here which I just think makes this paper so interesting um, and then after this was done for a little while I decided that we, it needed a partner so this is Antique Doors 2 and a lot more, you know, there's some script overlay, a lot more kind of grunge and rustiness and this sort of um, grungy bottom to it, you know, and, and these papers just really coordinate well together. Um, this paper is available in actually four different sizes now. Um, 
I did in the latest release. I put it together side by side on an A4 sheet so that these are now half scale. I've also got both of these in A3, the full size, and then I also have these in XL. So these are just a wonderful, um, they work so well together. And so as you can see on our journal, I did the front in Antique Door 2, and I did the back in Antique Door 1. <coughs> so these are the papers that we're gonna use, and we are going to use the watercolor paper that I just mentioned. This paper is originally nine by 12. I did cut it down, so that's nine inches by 12 inches. Um, I did cut this down a good bit so that it would fit inside you know, the journal. I just wanted it to be a, a tad, a hair smaller than the paper um, so that it would fit nicely in there. So this is cut down from nine inches by 12 and I cut it down to it's now uh, eight inches by 11 and a half. So you could, you know, you could probably just use cardstock or some other standard size, but just know that if you did that, uh, the bottom would be a little bit smaller, which isn't a problem. Okay, any questions about that? And then I'll show you the rest of the uh, products that I'm gonna use. Let me grab some of my coffee. Hi, Leanne. All right, who else do we have joining us? Let's see. So we've got 12 on. Um, and I see D tagging some people who had said they were interested. Thank you, Kathy. Um, all right, good. So we'll, we won't get too far along and then some of the folks that she's tagged will, will join in. All right, so for the, um, for the notebook, I'm actually gonna use Stone Paper by Stamperia because Decoupage Queen does not have a stone paper. I wish we did, but we don't. Um, so we are going to use Stamperia paper for this project. Um, and I did see earlier in the group, I did see some people asking about stone paper. So this is a good chance to just kind of get a look at it. Um, it's a very heavy, um, it's thick, it's almost like cardstock, but thicker and it's got some texture to it. Um, and you can decoupage on this. This is also supposed to be washable. Um, I've seen some people make purses, bags, all kinds of things out of it. I personally have not tried to do that. In fact, this journal is the very first time that I've actually used stone paper. I, I, I have a little shop in the US and I do carry this. Um, and I know Dee did have some at one point. I don't know if she plans to get it back in stock or not, but she told me she had one sheet left and I think she was gonna try to use that for her project. Oh, great, Dee, so you'll have stone paper um, in the next few weeks. So if people want to try this on their own, you know, if you do want to try it, I would tell, I would ask Dee to order you some or, or just let her know so she kind of knows how much to get. This is A3 size, okay? Um, <coughs> so it is, you know, basically double A4, all right? So A4 size is, approximately your letter size, and then A3 size is, is double that. So I'm using one sheet of A3 for this. You could use two sheets of A4, that would be fine, and you just have to kind of seal it, seal it here. Um, so you could do that. Or if you wanted to make a smaller notebook, you know, with, you know, something like that, you could cut this and make a smaller notebook. It's really, you know, up to you what you wanna do. But yeah, so this is stone paper. It's A3 and I'm going to fold it in half for this project. Um, 
So before I get too much further along, I'll show you some of the other elements that I'm going to be using. Um, I use Collage Posh. This is just, you know, this is just the product that I started with. There's no really right or wrong medium to use. You can use Mod Podge. Um, you could use PVA glue, watered down. I know that's, uh, I don't even know what PVA glue is. We don't call it that in the United States. I think it's just wood glue. Um, you could use any brand of decoupage medium, but this is the one that I like because, and the reason why I like it is because it dries matte and it doesn't show a lot of the, the brush strokes when it dries. And it just so happens to be the very first one that I <clears throat> ever used. Um, so I like it. They don't pay me to endorse their brand or anything, but I, I like it. <coughs> um, we're gonna be using washi tape. This is a really large piece, or a large roll. It is measuring, it is measuring, okay, Elmer's glue, got it. Um, it's, this piece is measuring about four inches, which is roughly 10 centimeters. Um, so we're gonna use this for the spine, okay? That's just gonna go right here. It's purely decorative, there's no functional purpose for it other than just to give it some extra elements. Um, for the inside pages, we are going to use, um, we're actually gonna use book binding tape. And I just got this roll on Amazon. Um, it was pretty reasonable. You could also use washi tape to put your insides together. That's what I did here. But I didn't feel like, kind of once I started going through it, I didn't feel like it was quite strong enough. And I had to do a couple layers on some pieces. Um, it was just ripping a little bit too easily for my liking, but if that's all you have, or if you want to use something else, masking tape, packing tape, whatever, you know, all we're doing is we're just going to you know, basically combine these pages together with it. Um, hello, Fanola and Kathy, Leanne. Hi, Leanne. Hello, Mary. Um, let's see. So... All right, so the other products that I'm gonna be using, I've got some scrap leather. This is tooling leather. You don't have to use this. You could just use stone paper if you wanted and just cut it. Um, you, but I happen to have some scrap tooling leather laying around. I do make bracelets out of it. Um, and I just think it gives it a little bit more of an authentic look. So I had it and that's why I used it, but you could use anything. You could use an old belt or just some other, um, you know, like maybe a hinge or some other metal clasp or something to kind of um, tie, the, tie these edges together, okay? Um, I just think it finishes it off or this is completely optional you don't even have to put this on there it's it I'm you know I'm never gonna really tie this it's more decorative okay so don't get too hung up on that um I am going to use some waxes these waxes are Finnebear waxes I did see a couple of people asking about waxes <clears throat> these are the ones that I use. They're um, Finnebear, they're Prima products. Um, they're pretty, they're available just about everywhere now. Um, but the ones that I'm gonna be using are the Rusty Red and the Patina Green. 
and I'm also going to be using liquid acrylics. So what I'll do at the end is I'll just post um, in the comments, I'll post all the supplies that I used. Um, and if you have any questions about, you know, where to get any of this stuff, um, D and I, and, and I'm sure lots of you in the United Kingdom know where, where to purchase these types of items. I can tell you in the US, but I don't really know that much about um, overseas markets. So um, I have also got some little metal elements. I just bought these on Amazon and you know, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. And I've got this whole little bag just full of little metal treasures um, that I use from time to time, you know, and I uh, just kind of pull things out from here. Um, so you could use molds, you could use anything, you could skip the metal altogether. So that's, in by way of supplies, that's pretty much what we're gonna be working with. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So um, if you've just joined, send me a note. I can see the comments, so send me a note. Tell me you're here. Tell me where you're from. Let me hear some more about you, okay? Um, also, one more piece of information. Decoupage Queen does have a Facebook group. Um, it's called Decoupage Queens and Kings. We do monthly challenges, so you can actually do the challenge with us. Um, and this month happens to be a book challenge where you make a, a journal cover or a book cover and you can win um, a $50 gift certificate to our store and also um, an apron. You might be able to see my apron that I have. You could win an apron. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is work on my pages. This is the inside of the book. I have watercolor paper. It's a very thick, heavy paper. And again, I cut this down from nine by 12. Hi, Leanne, thank you. Hi, Cindy. Nice to see you guys. Um, thank you for being here. Um, so, D, uh, Karen, that's Crea Red. Hopefully she'll come on and say hello. Um, she is actually a design team member for us. So she has done a book. In fact, I think the book that you purchased from her, the elephant book, I think that was her, her challenge book. But she's actually not eligible to win because she is a design team member. Um, so we do encourage all of our design team members to do the monthly project with us. Um, Iveta just did one, so um, she did a very lovely one. And so they show them and, you know, they, um, <clears throat> they play along, but they're not actually eligible to win because they get, they get pretty much all the free paper they want anyway. <laughs> and they all have t-shirts and aprons, so. Um, all right, so this is the watercolor paper and I'm just going to tape these together. So that's all I'm doing here, okay? Side by side. And I'm trying to be as straight as possible. We'll see how this goes. This is a little bit more opaque than the, um, than the washi tape I was using is, but hopefully it's a little bit more secure. We'll see. Okay, so I'm just laying these down. I've got 12 of these and I'm working through the stack, just kind of going side by side to get them nested so that I can make a book out of them. All right. So do I have, Iveta, I know you're on, but do I have any other decoupage queen um, design team members on? or other decoupage queen um, enthusiasts who have done the book challenge with us. 
or done any of the challenges. Um, I thought I saw Agnieszka, I don't know if you're on. Um, so feel free to share about your experience with the challenges if you're, if you're here. Okay. I always do, we always do um, a live or something to kick it off and just kind of show an example. Usually they're pretty simple examples. And then I'll always do one of the challenge entries as well. Um, Heather, my daughter, whose account I'm using <laughs> right now to do this, she, um, she usually does one as well. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm doing 12 of, there are 12 pages and I'm gonna have, by the time I'm done here, I'm gonna have six stacks taped together, okay? So that's all I'm doing. Hopefully you don't have any questions about this. Can you guys see, do you, are you following along with, with how I'm doing this? And this is just so that I have the pages for the inside of my book and we're actually gonna sew these pages into our journal. So this book will be completely handmade by the time we're done, okay? So I do make books pretty regularly. Um, I sort of adapted this project from these books that I make. I make these art journals and I usually use four or five different booklets inside um, but this one is just going to be larger and it's only going to have one booklet inside. So I take old book covers and, um, make my own books. I do have a pretty detailed YouTube video on this on my decoupage queen, um, YouTube channel. So just so you guys know, there's more than one way to do this. So... I'm also planning to, um, once I'm done here, I'm also planning to, um, yes, you can save, uh, this video will save in the group, okay? And I'm also planning to put this video on YouTube as well, okay? I do that too though, when I watch lives, I take notes about <laughs> the materials and um, how to do it. So we are almost done with this step. Um, but if you do go to the Decoupage Queen YouTube channel, look for the Queen Bee Journal. And it's, you know, the concept of how we're gonna do this and how we're gonna do, how I did that book is very similar. We're, we're going to um, sew it in exactly the same way. Okay, all right, so questions or anything about what I'm doing? Okay, you guys are quiet, it's, but it's later in the UK, right? It's like 3 p.m. So, um, I've, I've still, I'm still drinking my coffee. <laughs> okay. Um, still waking up. It's early still here. And, you know, if there, if there are other projects that you want to see or want to learn, um, if D lets us do this again, then I'm happy to come on and and do some other things with you as well. Um, I really love teaching. I I taught a lot of classes before coronavirus, and um, I don't get to do it that much anymore, <laughs> obviously. So I don't. I I actually love doing this. So it's no problem at all. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, um, for the other book, I 
did this this page as the cover and so I'm gonna just switch it around a little bit and I'm gonna use this page as the cover this time um, I'm gonna put my taped pages to the side um, actually you know what I will go ahead let's do this step now before we've decorated um, I'm gonna go ahead and sew these pages into the stone paper so this is the stone paper don't get it confused with your watercolor paper this is going to be the book jacket and now since I've got these all taped it forms a little booklet okay and I'm gonna sew these pages right into here okay so that's what we're gonna do and the key really is just to make sure you could use an awl do you know what an awl is it is a uh, let's see if I've got one I don't have one in here, but it's basically like a, um, it's a sharp pointed thing where you could just, you know, put the, um, actually I may have one in my leather kit. Um, anyway, it's a sharp tool that you use to kind of bore holes through things. Um, I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna use my hole punch and so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of marking off where I want my holes to go. And I'm going to take that and do the same thing here so that I get my holes in the exact same spot. Because I'm going to sew these pages into this book. Okay, I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just kind of eyeballing. I need three holes. So I need one at the top. I need one at the middle. I need one at the bottom. Does this make sense? Is everybody understanding what I'm doing? Do you need me to explain anything um, else about this? So I'm marking the holes um, on where I need to, to use my hole punch. So let me know, let me know if you need me to slow down or if I'm good to keep going. Okay, D says yes, all good. Okay, so this is the tool that I'm going to use. This is called a Memory Keepers Big Bite Hole Punch. Again, you could use an all, let me see if I have one. I'll show you that if I have one. This is a lot cheaper of a tool than this okay so you could just take this in fact you know you could just take this and sort of bore it through a page at a time probably would be easiest okay um, so one of these is handy to have but since I make a lot of these I invested in um, this heavy-duty tool okay so this has uh, a couple different settings on it and you can see, I'll just show you because you won't be able to see it um, once I get started, but when I press down here, you can see this little area right here um, makes a nice clean punch and it's super strong, it'll go through um, really thick pages. So that's the tool that I use. Okay, and I did, I've got 12 sheets of paper here and I just punched through, um, I just punched through all of them. It's actually six lined up, but it's watercolor paper, so it's really thick. Okay. Have you guys ever seen this tool before? Tell me if this is brand new for you. 
I'm just curious. I don't know if, do you guys, if you're in the UK, have you seen this before? Or are you able to get it? Do you know anything about it? Just curious. So now, since I marked out the pages on my stone paper, I'm just going to do the same holes on my stone paper. Okay. Normal hole puncher. Dee's going to look for one. Um, okay, so I'm ready to sew these pages into my book, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, okay? So I'm just kind of folding it so that I get a nice, tight um, seam, you know, and it'll, it'll lay flat, flatter as you go you know, and as you, as you use it, and hopefully you do use this, that is the point, is to um, make something that you'll use. I just started taking, um, I'm learning how to do watercolor, so I'm hoping that this will be my go-to watercolor journal. Um, so I just started taking classes with, um, a US artist by the name of Danielle Mack. I'm super excited to learn from her. She has got some pretty incredible um, paintings, portraits. And um, anyway, so that's why I chose watercolor paper because I wanna be able to um, do some of my practice projects inside my journal. All right. So any questions so far, feel free to type them in the comments. I, I can see the comments, so you can definitely communicate, ask questions. Okay. So I am going to, hello, Kathy. So you're on the south coast of United Kingdom. Um, Geraldine's watching from Ireland. Hi, Jenny. Jenny's from Midlands, England. Okay. So this is sewing. It's not hard. I think I forgot to show you my sewing kit before we started, but this is the sewing kit. I've got these needles. These are darning needles. Um, the hole on the darning needles is pretty wide and the tip of them is pretty blunt. So these are perfect. If you Google darning needles, these are perfect for um, book binding techniques. So, and I'm using wax linen thread, okay? And you should, you really should just be able to get this at, on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's just called a book binding kit. And if you can find one that has um, the awl and the binding tape, that probably would be a pretty good value, okay? Um, so it's wax linen thread. I'm gonna choose this um, neutral color. And basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna sew these through, but I need three lengths of the book worth of thread. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. So it's one length, two lengths, three lengths, okay? And then I'm gonna cut it. Okay, and I'm gonna sew my needle. Okay. 
I mean, this is a pretty big hole and I'm still having trouble because I'm practically blind. <laughs> it happens. Okay, so, um, all right, so I'm just checking to see if I've missed any notes. Looks like we're all good. All right, so when you're sewing your cover in, you can, you start with the middle hole and with the book open, make sure that you're not, you know, make sure that you're not like this. You wanna be at the center page, right? Cause you're, this page wouldn't get sewn in. So make sure you're at their center page with all of the pages nested together, okay? And you're gonna start at the center and push your way through. Okay. So, I might need to take the cover off. And there we go. You can see, there we go. There's my cover. Okay. So, I have started at the center and I'm pushing my way through all of those holes. Okay. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of slack there. That's probably enough. And then now I'm going to go from the outside in. I'm gonna start here at the top of the book and go from the outside and work my way in. Okay. All right, so I've got that. And now I'm gonna flip it back over and pull it in. Make sure I'm not hung up on anything. Okay, so now um, my next stitch is gonna be this bottom one. And I'm just going through the bottom. And again, I do have a very detailed YouTube video on my YouTube channel about bookmaking. It's the Queen Bee Journal um, that repeats this step about four different times. This takes a little bit of practice. You might have to watch this a few times. Um, all right, so that one's in. This is one long strip here, and now I'm coming back through the middle, okay? Okay. Hello, Roy. So, um, my name is Teresa. I am on my daughter's account. <laughs> my daughter's, my daughter is Heather. She let me use her account so we could do this. We were having some technical difficulties. Um, so, uh, Heather was kind enough to let me use her YouTube account or her Facebook account. Okay, so now, so you can see I have a long string in the middle and then I have two tails, okay? So I want a tail on either side and now I'm just gonna tie it. I'm gonna tie it three times, one, two, Okay, so Roy is, um, who's in Spain? Roy, are you in Spain? Okay, so um, there we go. Now I am all sealed up, okay? So take a look at that. So this is what you want. You've got two, uh, two lines there, okay? So I'm just gonna try to bend it to make it a little bit flatter. Um, it will lay flat as we go. This will sort of start to give and it'll be a little bit more flexible. And I'm gonna cut these tails off, okay? So that wasn't bad, right? I mean, let me know, do you think that you would try this um, at home? Do you think that you would do this? I didn't think that was too bad and I thought it's a really good place to, um, to kind of start if you're interested in making a book on your own. I think it's an easy, 
easy way to start. So Kathy, are you gonna try it? Leanne, you're gonna try it? All right, awesome. Good, so super easy, right? Okay. Um, all right, so what I may do is just lay it this way uh, while I do my decoupage so I don't have to fight with the pages turning up. And we're gonna go ahead and get started on the decoupage part now. So the book is completely assembled. Um, totally up to you what you wanna do from here. Um, but um, this is what I'm gonna do. So if you're just joining us, we're working on this project here. This is a, a book that I made. Um, you can watch the replay, probably too much to explain at this point as to how I did all of this or how I started, but watch the replay. We're making this book and I'm gonna switch it up. I did this page on the back last time. I'm gonna do that on the front and switch it up a little bit. Okay, so normally with rice paper, and let's talk about this for a minute. Let me get my coffee. <clears throat> All right, so normally with rice paper, you wanna tear these white edges off. I am I'm actually going to cut the edges off with my scissors because I want the edge to be as clean as possible on my book. So um, it's a little bit sacrilege, right? <laughs> to cut your rice paper. But I'm here to tell you it's perfectly fine depending on the project that you're doing. So I'm gonna use scissors and I'm just cutting off the white part. And the reason I have, so I did have an option when I was um, working with my manufacturer on the, on the paper. Um, I did have an option to do the full bleed edges um, so that we wouldn't have the white parts on it, but I chose not to because I wanted to get as much of the de design as possible. So I wanted the whole, so when you do bleed edges, you lose, you know, part of the, part of the edges, right? And I didn't want that. I wanted to have the entire um, paper be the A4 size. So that's what you got. So these are slight, you know, slightly larger images <coughs> um, than some of the other rice paper companies, like um, you know ITD. Um, this paper is going to be just slightly larger than that, uh, but the weight, you know, the weight is comparable. The quality of it was the most important thing for me, and I do have these manufactured in Italy. Um, and I have been super impressed with the quality that I've, I've gotten. Dee, tell me, tell me what you think. You've seen it. Hopefully you've used it a couple times. Tell me how you feel, um, the quality of this paper compares. Just curious. I'm curious your thoughts because you are a, a supplier of rice paper and you know, um, you know, you know what all the brands are doing. So I'm just curious if you agree with me. Okay. Also, if any of you that are watching, if any of you have used Decoupage Queen paper, let me know your thoughts too. Okay, so again, I'm just cutting the edge. So I've got a nice clean edge and I'm gonna do the same with this one. Okay. 
So what I try to do with my projects, I really try to illustrate that um, decoupage is really just, it can be so much more than gluing paper onto a page. And, you know, that's why I like to add a lot of different interesting elements, you know, and a lot of what I do, I'm, I'm not gonna call it mixed media, <laughs> but it kind of borders on mixed media. Um, there are some absolutely brilliant mixed media artists um, out there. Kreia Red, for example, she is just an amazing artist. Um, Iveta has um, now started doing a lot of mixed media as well. Just a brilliant, um, brilliant artist on my team who are much more skilled at mixed media than I am. Um, but I do like to add, you know, incorporate touches here and there just so that it, it's, it has a little bit more texture and, and interest. Um, you know, and I, I did start out doing glass bottles, like many of you. I've, I've done tons of glass bottles. I still do glass bottles, and I love, 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 love um, my glass bottles. So nothing wrong with pure decoupage at all, but it's just nice to, to do some, um, to add some other elements as well. Okay, so thank you, Dee. Yeah, that's 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 what I was I was trying to you know make the point is um, the thickness is it's a a little bit heavier than like a stamperia paper, um, but it doesn't wrinkle as much, and it's you know the colors the colors that they use are just fantastic. Um, the XL sheets are tissue paper, like you said. They're 20 inches by 30 inches. Um, I don't know what that equates to in centimeters, but they're quite large. They're good for tabletops or, or um, dresser fronts. Yeah, 20 by 30 inches. Um, so they're, you know, it's a, it's a nice product. Um, I will say, so I'll just tell you guys, I am, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this yet. Um, I am trying to find a different manufacturer for my larger paper. And my hope is that we will be able to do it um, on a different type of material, something that's a little bit more consistent like rice paper. So I'm, um, you know, looking, I'm always looking at ways to improve uh, what I'm offering, okay? So I, I don't have anything firm. <laughs> I absolutely love the tissue paper that I'm using, but um, I do think there are some improvements that could be made, so I'm, I'm actively working on uh, that technology. So, you know, just keep that in mind as we go, that what you see today may not always be um, what we're doing in the future. We're always evolving, right? Okay, so I am, again, I'm just using this collage page, all right? And I'm just going to use my flat brush. I'll get a cleaner one. So this is the, it's the Crafter's Choice three quarter inch um, flat brush. Okay, it's nice and clean, it's dry, and this is the brush that I normally use. Um, I didn't get my water cup to put it in after, but you do wanna make sure that you clean these right away after using them, otherwise they'll go, um, you know, they'll get ruined. Clean it up with soap and water. Okay, so I've laid this down where I want it, and when I do decoupage, what I do is I lay it down where I want it first. And then I do a section at a time, okay? So I'm gonna decoupage right onto this stone paper. 
Okay, and I'm doing a thin layer underneath. This is not new to you guys. You guys have been doing decoupage for a long time. So this is probably the least exciting part of this project, right? <laughs> you've, you've been there, done that. You all have your own techniques, I'm sure, which are also, which are totally fine. I'm not here to say this is the right way or the way you should be doing it. This is just how, this is how I do it so that I can keep my paper as straight as possible and lined up where I want it as I'm working, okay? And I'm just making sure that my uh, paper underneath is completely covered in the decoupage medium before moving on to the next section, okay? And then I am going to do the top last. Okay. So lots of different methods out there. Um, with rice paper, you know, it is easy. It's, I find it's easier than napkins. Um, and so you don't have to be as meticulous because you just don't, you're just not gonna get a lot of the wrinkling that you do with other, you know, like with tissue paper um, or, um, or napkins, okay? So this is, again, this is how I do it. This is not necessarily a decoupage technique class. <laughs> so, you know, this is just the way that I find helps me to get my image on as straight as possible, where intended. Okay, but I will say, I think this is, this is the important part, is that when you're laying down the glue on the top, you should always start in the center and work your way out. And then that way it just kind of releases any air bubbles um, toward the edges and doesn't kind of get them moving around your your paper. Does that make sense? Oh good, okay, so D does it the same. Um, any questions so far? I'm, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions about techniques or, you know, things that I might recommend. Definitely happy to answer those types of things. Um, Okay, so this piece is almost done. And this is just a full sheet as designed. I didn't get too crazy with changing anything here. Okay, so now I'm going to do this side. Okay, and and I'm gonna do it the exact same way. Okay. Do you use the same kind of brush, Dee? I'm just curious um, what kind of brushes everybody uses. Thank you, Noala. Thank you so much. I um, it makes me so happy to hear when people like when people like the paper and they're excited about it, um, or they can see you know they can see the image and know exactly what they want to do with it. I just I love hearing that feedback. Okay, yeah, so Kathy, um, I, I said this earlier, but if there are 
if there's a specific Excel paper that you want, let Dee know so that she can order it. Um, I don't think she's ordering a whole, like every single Excel paper, so definitely let her know if there's one in particular that you're after and she can get it in with this order um, for sure. The Harlequins have been super popular. I've got some, some new Harlequin patterns and those have just been flying off the shelves. I've got some new botanicals. I do have these, both of these actually in XL as well. Um, and of course the Bluebird Queen, everybody loves that Bluebird Queen. <laughs> um, and I'm about ready to tell my design team, okay guys, no more Bluebird Queen projects. <laughs> because we have a ton of Bluebird Queen projects. It's a, it's a beautiful paper though, and, and everybody just loves it. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, there was a lady, Gwendolyn, um, Gwendolyn Hamelman, I think. She did a project with the Bluebird Queen paper that was just mind blowing. So she did it, it was a canvas, and she, put the paper on and then she took like um, crushed glass and went over the feathers and and then she did resin over the whole top of it. Uh, it was just to die for. Um, so yeah, that was amazing. Hopefully she'll, maybe she'll share some of her techniques at some point. Okay. So again, um, if you want to participate, if you want to do this project or you want to do something like it and you want to participate in our book challenge, you have until January 29th and the group is um, Decoupage Queens and Kings and that is where we do our monthly challenges. You can win a gift voucher, an apron, you could actually even win if you would rather have a t-shirt instead of an apron, you could do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go put this in some water real fast and then I'm gonna dry this and I will be right back. So I'm gonna dry this with my heat tool. Um,
Okay. That's my least favorite part on lives, but has to be done in order to keep it moving. So I apologize for the noise, but um, anyway, that's where we're at. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my washi paper and see this white part here. The whole point of the washi paper or the washi tape is I'm just, I just wanna cover up this white, this white part, okay? Um, so this is, this is just some brown washi tape. Um, I got this on amazon.com. Um, <coughs> I don't know what brand it is or anything, but you could use anything. I know Tim Holtz has a lot of really nice ones as well. And I did really like, when I did it on this book, I did really like this butterfly here. So I'm gonna try to get that butterfly in the same spot again, if we can find it. Um, if we can find our butterfly, there she is, okay. So, and I'm gonna lay this down um, roughly to get that middle piece, okay. There we go. There's my butterfly. And I'm just gonna uh, seal this down on this side first, and then I'm gonna fold it over. So I never know, like, I, I'm i not a washi type, I'm not a washi tape person. I don't really use that much of it. So I don't know an, a lot about um, washi tapes and brands. But there are people who are just obsessed with washi tape. So if you are one of those people, let me know. And I'm I'm curious, you know, I bought this for a long a long time ago and I didn't this is the first time I've ever used it. So uh, what do you use it for if you are a washi tape enthusiast? I'm just curious. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold it before I press down here because I don't want it to tear or buckle, okay? But I like it, I like this one because it's got, you know, it's just got some of the little steampunk images. It says, find your happy place, dare to be different. Um, I like it overall, okay. So there we go. There's my, see how I, when I folded it over, it gave me a little bit of extra slack in the middle that I needed, okay? And that's good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it this way. Um, I am gonna start gluing um, some other things down. So you can see how I did that. Um, Actually, let me, let me keep it like this for now. Um, but I wanted to show you, you know, I wanted to show you this. This is liquid acrylics. And I use this quite a bit to add um, <clears throat> texture and dimension. So you can see, the, this looks very clean right now. This does not. This looks very grungy. And it's because I took some of this liquid acrylics and just sort of added some my own distressing in here. This is a very pigmented product, so you don't need a lot of it. And you always want to um, blend it with a little bit of water. So you can see I've got a little bit of water on there. Um, if you paint straight with it, you're just gonna have some really dark spots. Um, so I'm just gonna take it and add, you know, use it with a paintbrush just to add a little bit of distressing to some of the edges, okay? Um, all right. And then here where I've still got some white over here, I wanna go in and fill some of that in. Um, 
so this product comes in a bunch of different shades. I probably use the, this is Burnt Sienna. So this is the one that I use the most often um, for doing exactly what I'm showing you right now. Okay. So does that make sense? Have you seen, have you seen this done before? I'm just curious, have you, is this the first time you've seen this uh, product? It's called Liquid Acrylics. Um, so it's really, it's, it's acrylic paint and it's watered down, but it's super pigmented and concentrated. And you can almost use it like watercolor. Um, sponge is fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of brown just to make it a little bit more grungy on the cover, okay? And then I'm gonna take some of that uh, patina wax and brighten some of the spots that I've dulled down some. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with the back over here. Okay, and if I've got too much, I could just take, you know, I could just take a little baby wipe and and rub some off, okay? Um, so yeah, this is, this. it's Liquid Acrylics by Finabare. Um, we're gonna be using some other waxes and stuff from Finabare as well. Um, but Pentart, you know, has similar products. Um, and, um, you know, Stamperia has a really nice, uh, vintage aging wax which would do the same thing you know and so it just sort of enhances that grunginess of the edges here right it, it looks very natural when you put it on hello Agnieszka we were having some trouble when we first got started um, so I'm on Heather's account she let me use her account to to get it going, so I'm not surprised um, you missed it. So, um, Agnieszka is on the Decoupage Queen design team. Please follow her. Agnieszka, will you put your um, Aga design art, will you put the link to that, please, in the comments so everybody can, can follow your work? She does just some incredible um, projects that I'd love for you guys to see. She also just started a YouTube channel um, where she's going to be sharing different projects with not just Decoupage Queen, but um, other, you know, lots of different um, brands and techniques. So just amazing, amazing artist. So thank you for joining, Agnieszka. I'm, gl I'm glad to see you here. Okay, so keep going here. Uh, I'll put a little bit of brown on the butterfly. Um, I don't wanna overdo it, you know, because there is just so much beautiful um, green and brown in it already. So I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from what's already there. I'm just really trying to make it, um, kind of really just trying to enhance, I guess what's already there and and give it just a little bit more grunginess than it has already okay all right so there we go and you know i i didn't have a plan i just sort of i always do the corners i always do the edges and then you know some random spots in between like i might I might hit this door a little bit and down here. Okay. All right. Might add a little bit more in there. Um, another thing that I, I do kind of like to do with this brown, and I'll do that while I have it, 
um, is add some brown um, like splatters on it as well. So let's try that. Let's just do that. So I'm just taking, um, you know, the water. I poured the water in there and I'm going to do take a little bit onto a, like a fan brush and I'm just going to pop it right over the top and I'll do it over there too. Now I've splattered myself everywhere. Okay, and that just gives it a little bit more um, random, I guess, you know, drops of color, which that'll dry in a moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and heat dry it. Um. Uh, now I'm ready to glue on. I want to go ahead and do my my leather pieces So I've got these two little leather pieces that I cut out um, And I'm just going to paint that with the liquid acrylics as well um, You could you you could stain it if you wanted to but this works just fine Can you see so I'm just taking the liquid acrylic right onto my leather pieces that I cut, and uh, guess what? Now it looks like stained leather. <laughs> so easy. All right, so that's why I, I just love this. Um, yeah, yeah, so I, I said, that, said that earlier, yeah, you could use stone paper if you don't have um, tooling leather, you could just use another scrap piece of stone paper uh, and get the same effect. Um, wouldn't be quite as thick, but it would work just fine. Um, you could use an old belt. You could just do like a decorative um, hinge or something. Doesn't have to be, certainly doesn't have to be real leather. Okay, so like I said, I just happen to have um tooling leather at home because i make bracelets and stuff out of it so uh it was easy for me to to grab it all right so and 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 that just gets glued right there okay hello inga how are you um no problem. So stone paper is from Stamperia. It is a product that is virtually indestructible. Um, if you replay and watch from the beginning, that's what this cover is made out of. It's made out of stone paper. Um, the one that I have is A3 size. Um, but it comes, it also comes in A4 size and it also comes in a larger, like 50 by, uh, 70, um, really large format. So people make purses out of it. It's washable. Although I would not recommend washing this notebook. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm just gonna let that kind of dry off to the side. Let me go stick this in some water. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start 
gluing on some of my elements and I'll be right back. All right, so I pulled out, um, I did pull out some metal elements, and like I said, you know, I've got this bag of little goodies from just random things that I've collected on eBay and Amazon, all these little metal pieces. Um, so I could not tell you exactly what I bought or where I bought it, but if you Google or if you search for um, mixed media metal embellishments, <laughs> um, you'll find tons of stuff out there. And so I just pulled out a few um, that I thought would go well. So I just pulled some out uh, to use and I'm gonna try to lay out randomly <laughs> um, I'm sure you have bags of other stuff, Inca, that I would just be dying over. So please don't be jealous of my little bag of metal trinkets. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to lay this out. Now, I, I don't want to cover too much of my door. Um, but these little corner pieces I like, and I like them over here. So I'm going to glue those over here. And... Um, this little guy, I thought he was cute. It's a little bumblebee. So we'll use that. And this sentiment says, um, less perfection, more authenticity. That's it. This is actually a finabare plate. So I'll try to see if I can lay, lay this down. I'm sure you do, Agnieszka. I'm sure you have lots of lots of little treasures that we would all be very jealous of. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna play around with a layout here and see see what I like. I like this little bumblebee on here. Uh oh. All right, can you guys still see me okay? I had a little bit of a glitch. Um, all right, so this I like. Doesn't have to be too busy. Okay, so I kind of like the way that's looking. Um, might not use all of it, but, and then I kind of like this keyhole up next to the leather piece, and I'm going to bend this leather piece a little bit. Okay, bend that a little bit. Okay, so yeah, so I like this layout. And I'm gonna go ahead and punch some holes in my leather. This is this is actually a leather hole punch. So if you were using stone paper for this instead, you could just use a regular hole punch. Okay, they do make special hole punches designed to cut through leather, and I happen to have it. Okay. Just bending that down a little bit so that it'll kind of curve. All right. So I'm gonna get started gluing and then we will put on some finishing touches and we're just about done. Um, so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for so long and bearing with some of our early um, snafus. It's been a lot of fun. Um, if you have any questions for me, now would be a good time to ask them. Um, 
course, I'll go through and I'll check the comments again just to see if there's anything that I missed. And um, all right, so I'm all I'm using here, I'm using Fabrifix glue. I use lots of different glues depending on the project, but I like this one because it's a little bit thick and tacky and it, um, it grabs on quick um, so that it doesn't like slide around too much when I place things. So this is the one that I tend to use most often um, for bookmaking projects. But you can you can use anything. Okay. All right. So I have no idea what you guys are talking about, Agnieszka and Inga. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, so yeah, Agnieszka and Inga are both design team members for Decoupage Queen. And as you can see, um, we have a lot of fun together. Right, girls? Yes, we do. We keep each other laughing constantly. So it's always fun. So you have to be able to enjoy what you're doing and who you're doing it with. And I can honestly say Okay, my bag of goodies, okay. I can honestly say that um, this is the most fun of any group that I've ever been involved in. We just have a ton of fun together. We get silly, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, and we really enjoy each other. It's a, it's a great group of ladies. Um, so yeah, very honored to be working with, um, just some really amazing people. So, um, so Nuala, the, the medium that I used to do the decoupage is called, um, Aline's collage page. This is the one that I use. Okay, I I prefer a matte finish when I do decoupage. I don't really like the glossy look. Um, you know, you could always. I only did one layer here. Um, technically, I probably should have done another layer, but I didn't. Um, I to be honest, I almost never do because. I've never had an issue just using one. Um, so I think this little bee here is not gonna stick that well. So I'm actually gonna take a different gel and I'm gonna put, put that on this bee so that he will stick better. So let me see if I can find it. Um, the one that I wanted to use was the heavy body gel. So let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. So, um, you know, what I use to stick this down, regular glue, Fabrifix, totally fine if it's just flat. But if you're trying to create something where they're layered on top of each other, you want to use something a little bit stronger. So for this B here, you can see he's kind of partway on <clears throat> this guy and partway on the paper. And I'm just gonna put some heavy body gel on him just to make sure that he um, he sticks on there. So I've got my little spatula, and I am gonna pull him up. There we go. And he's got some little curves and indentions, and so I'm just gonna stick that on there. and then I'll clean up the edges. There we go. So that's gonna stick. Yeah, that's gonna stick a lot better than just regular glue. And let me clean that 
edge up. This it'll dry that will dry transparent. And once I have, so I've got a little bit of that, so I'll just use that here as well. Um, yeah, if you're doing like a really heavy <clears throat> mixed media project, definitely regular glue is not going to cut it. You want something stronger. Heavy body gel is definitely the product. Um, but for what I did, for most of these little pieces, just regular glue is fine. Okay, but for this little bee, he's quite heavy and he's also layered, so he's sitting on a kind of an uneven surface. So the heavy body gel is a good choice there. Okay. So let me do, I'll go ahead and do the heavy body gel on this as well. And I'll get that down. Okay. There we go. And I'm done with that. So questions about Elaine, thank you so much. I, I am so thrilled that Dee and I decided to do this. Um, you know, we really just wanted to kind of share with you some new ways of looking at things. Um, and my belief is that, you know, I think sometimes we treat our paper, decoupage paper, just a little too precious. And I just wanted to show some way, some different ways of using it and to invite you all to, ex to experiment and just have fun. So we're gonna be doing some really outside the box um, projects on, on our challenges. Um, this month we do have the book challenge, like I said. Next month we're gonna be doing something really fun. We're gonna be doing upcycled thrift store finds I'm so excited about that. So Iveta and Inga will be um, kicking us off for that next month. Um, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm just gonna put my finishing touches on here and I've got some Finabare wax and I'm not gonna go too heavy. I'm just gonna kind of do it um, here and there just to add a little bit of patina. So you can see I'm putting it starting on my metal pieces um first we'll add a little bit to this B and I'm just using my fingers and then I can throw some kind of to brighten up some of these edges I can throw some around and it's almost the exact same color as the green that's in this paper so it is a perfect uh, complement to this paper okay and you know it's just very random and again it's just with my fingers you could use a brush if you wanted to that's okay i've got a baby wipe <laughs> um i have i have the most control with my fingers and i'm the type of person who always forgets to clean my brushes so um I end up with brushes stuck with wax. <laughs> so I rather just use my fingers. Thank you, Dee. I'm so glad to be here. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to do this. This was such an honor and privilege. Um, and I'm really excited to see um, if some of your members decide to make something, I'm really excited to see that. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use now, this is the rusty red, so I'm just gonna use that in some spots as well. We've got a little bit over here. Okay. I don't need too much of it, just a little, you know, just a little bit goes a long way. Okay. 
Um, oh, I wanted to put some on these corners. All right. So we're about to wind up. I mean, this is pretty much it. The wax is the last, the last step. Uh, it's kind of the finishing touch always because once you do wax, you can't really varnish or paint over it. I mean, you could, but um, it should always be really just the last final embellishment. So any questions before we, before we wind up? When this is completely dry, I'm gonna glue this to the um, bottom side, and the only reason I'm waiting is because I wanna make sure that they line up properly. Um, and then what I would do is just take a string and tie it through here, kind of a, I'll show you. This is just a loop that I did through there, okay. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. I am so glad that you guys did this with me and um, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of your weekend. And I definitely wanna see your projects, so thank you. Okay. Any questions or anything before we um, before we stop? Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Inga. Thank you, Noella. Thank you, guys, so much. Have a lovely weekend, and hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Okay. Bye bye.